Good morning, good morning, everybody. Um, it's garden coach, Jennifer Brennan. And um, I'm actually officially on vacation uh, today, but um, I'm doing this from my home, uh, my home studio, my, my conservatory. And, um, and because I wanted to keep the, uh, the schedule for garden coach um, every two weeks. And so I didn't want to, I didn't want to mess up the schedule. So, so you, you got the, um, uh, the email with um, the link to the webinar. And then also um, the, the, there's a link on there to, it's a PDF file that you you can print or you can open it on it, you know, on, on your alternate screen. So, um, so I'm early, I'm getting everything signed on at 935. Um, I, I don't, we don't have anybody um, signed on yet. Just me, just me. And um Got a lot of fun stuff to talk about, so um, I, I, I'm, I'm ready, willing, and able here. Let me get this set up. Great. Ooh, background lighting is not so good. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and share the screen. Okay, we're ready. Okay, why didn't this do this? Come on. That's what I want. There we go. <coughs> not good, not good, not good. <clears throat> oh, Zen tea. I love it. There we go.
Thank <laughs> you. Hi, everybody. I'm waiting. I signed on early to make sure the systems worked in my home conservatory. And we're up and I'm waiting. I'm the only one here. I'm just checking some of the uh, notifications on the weather. So I'm looking more intelligent when I do this presentation. <clears throat> Oh, this is ridiculous. I'm trying to get the answers, not.
Hello, hello. I just noticed somebody else signed on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it is quarter till, and um, I'm actually officially on vacation, um, but I wanted to keep the continuity of Garden Coach every two weeks going. So I'm actually in my home conservatory. That's all this, this plants in the background and the lights over here. So um, we'll get started at, um, at 10 and, um, and then I'll answer questions um, afterwards. You know, please put your questions in the Q and A area, whether rather than um, just the uh, the chat box. Okay, all right, thanks. We'll keep going, and I'm just checking some of the weather. I was actually um, in Arkansas at my other home, um, doing work down there all week, and conditions were totally different than up here. So I was kind of keeping track of the weather, but I wanted to see what the total amount of rainfall was this last week. And I'm not finding it very well on here. But so, um, so stay tuned, stay tuned. This is the eighth, so that means seven, six, five, four, four, four. Okay. <clears throat> well, it showed me there was rain, but it doesn't tell me how much. So. Okay, a lot of rain this past week. Cool. I'm not gonna worry about the details. Well, I, I drove in late last night and um, my sisters have a bunch of cats all around their house and several that live inside. And so my poor, little kitty won't even talk to me because <laughs> I smell like all those other cats. <laughs> he walked up to me like, who are you? So it's going to take a while to get used to get used to him and get used to me again. All my bulbs are up in my garden, which is really nice here, my garden here. And, um, and, um, all the spring cleanup happened while I was gone. So it was really nice. I was doing all that work down in Bella Vista, Arkansas. And it majority of the time down there was in the uh, 70s. Hi, I noticed somebody else signed on. Welcome, welcome to Garden Coach uh, 2022. I'm technically on vacation today and I've been out of town for 10 days. I went to Kansas City to help my sister at the KU Med Center and um, then I've, and then I've been uh, in, at my home in Bella Vista, Arkansas for the last five days, you know, working, working my tail off down there and um, just came in late last night. And um, so, uh, so I, I wanted to make sure that we, we kept the continuity of the garden coach sessions every two weeks. So I didn't want to I didn't want to drop that ball. And so, so I'm, I'm doing the, um, the second one of the month, uh, to, you know, today. And um, from what I understand, the nursery looks great. I haven't seen it for 10 days. So, so and we're, we're, we're getting, and the last I was talking with 
the staff, they're doing appointments to, to take people out into the nursery. But I think this weekend it's going to be um, it's going to be open for people to to go shop from the nursery, which is really nice. Really going to be fun. So um, the the email went out yesterday, you know, giving you the link to this and then the PDF file for um, on the topics that I'm going to be discussing on this PowerPoint, and then also the products that I'm going to be discussing. So it's all it's all gonna it's all gonna be you have it all at your fingertips. Welcome, welcome. I listen to country music as I'm driving on on the road, and and there was one song about um, about the city folk city folk. You know, the weatherman in the city warns it's going to rain and where I'm from, rain's a good thing. And, uh, and I, I know normally I normally say that I usually love it when it rains because our plants always need rain. But I got to tell you, driving in rain in the dark on the expressways when it's 75 miles an hour. Oh, my goodness. You know, I probably have bags under my eyes. <laughs> I'm seeing more people logging in. Welcome, welcome to Chalet Garden Coach. And um, I'm not in Chalet uniform because I'm I'm still officially on vacation. Um, I'm not back in this in the in the store until next Wednesday. Um, but so I'm doing this from my my home conservatory. You can see my plants, my ferns in the background, and um, and so I just didn't want to change and mess up the continuity of of doing Garden Coach every two weeks. So, so if I look a little more relaxed, it's kind of fun. You know, it's really fun. Welcome, welcome. I'm seeing people sign in um, one at a time. Welcome to Chalet's Garden Coach. I'm Jennifer Brennan. And um, I've explained that I, I'm actually officially on vacation until next, I go back in to work next Wednesday. And, um, but I didn't want to mess up the, the pattern of the Garden Coach every two weeks. So I offered to, you know, to do this when I when I got back into town, um, and so so I I have all the notes ready. So you got the email to log into the to the PowerPoint, and then you also got uh, the email that has a PDF file with the handout with all, all the notes on it that that you'll be needing today. And I kind of packed it full of good stuff. You're gonna love it, I think. So there we go. And watching the time, we're till 10 minutes to start. We should have good music, shouldn't I? I have to, I have to figure out how to do it, put good music in the background. Okay, good, good, good. Well, I had, um, there's another, another one signing on. Welcome, welcome to Chalet's Garden Coach. I'm Jennifer Brennan. And um, you um, talked about the handout. It was, was a, a link on the email showing you how to get to the link for the Zoom. So you can print that up. And um, I had a really bad experience down at my home in um, Arkansas. One of the neighbors was trapping cats and hauling them away and dumping them. So terrible, terrible, terrible. It was so good. I, I drove in late last night and uh, I drove through a lot of rain yesterday, which normally I like rain unless it's um, dark and you're driving. And uh, I, I, was, I, was, I drove way too late last night in the dark, in the rain. So, when you have um, questions um, during the, the PowerPoint presentation, please put them on the Q and A area in the Q and A area rather than the chat area. <clears throat> I can be more controlled about answering them that way and keep track of them better. And then I'll stay on, I'll answer all the questions at the end of the presentation. And I stay on as late as I need to, to answer your questions. So. 
Monica. I'm watching my cat across the room and he's, he's looking at me like I'm a foreigner. <laughs> Oh, there's more people. Welcome, welcome. We have um, seven minutes before we're gonna start. And um, I'm Jennifer Brennan, the garden coach. I'm technically on vacation, so that's why I'm not in my uniform. And uh, I'm actually in my, I, I call it my conservatory. It's right, I have a whole collection of ferns in here. And um, and, and and it's, it's a window that faces east. It's kind of nice. It's not too shiny, not too sunny today. Although it looks pretty, pretty, pretty contrasty in in my live shot up in the corner. We're really gearing up um, and everyone's been gearing up the week I've been gone at Chalet to get the nursery up and running. And it's technically open now. Um, they, they, the last I heard, they were wanting people to make appointments to, you know, to go out and shop. We're, we're gonna do things a little differently this season. Um, I, I don't think we're gonna have anybody stationed in um, the, the we, we call it the Plant Information Center. I think everyone's going to be out in the sales yard again, like good old times, like the good old times. And I'm going to be positioned half the time inside at the, at the diagnostic desk and then the other time outside selling plans. So we're, we, even before I left to go on my vacation, uh, we were getting just tons of gorgeous plants in. So, so, so it's officially opening this weekend. So more people signing on. Welcome, welcome. I'm Jennifer Brennan, the Chalet's Garden Coach. Uh, I'm um, on vacation, so I'm at my home conservatory. And um, so that's why it looks a little different in the background. I'm seeing the numbers pop up there. Welcome, welcome. We'll be starting in five minutes. And um, I had explained, th those of you signed on early have heard this over and over. Um, I'm, I'm on vacation. So I'm not in my official uniform. I'm in I'm in my 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 my, my layman's clothes here, and um, I I drove in late last night. I I'd been down in uh, my second home down in Arkansas. It it was my dad's home, and then when he passed away two years ago, um, I I I took ownership of it. So two of my sisters lived there. So I went down to kind of. Uh, not kind of, I went down and worked like a dog. I, I, I did all the, the, the spring cleanup, pruned all the shrubs that need to be, need to be pruned, um, cut out about eight weed trees that had grown into some of the garden beds. And um, I, uh, I, I worked, I worked hard. I worked hard, got a lot done. Numbers are ticking up. We've got 17 people. Welcome, welcome to the Chalet Garden Coach. We'll be getting started in three minutes. I've got a great PowerPoint. I've got lots of interesting information. I even did some research and found out some neat things about some of the bio-advanced products that I, I, I can't wait to share with you. I mean, really cool, really cool improvements really cool improvements and i'm hoping they're able to um they were able to get them our buyers were looking into getting them pretty soon okay huh i got a weird thing on my huh I have this thing that says, please move this window away. Huh. Wow, okay. 
I've got people signing on. 23, welcome everybody. Um, I just had a, something pop up on the screen that said people can see this. Talk on it. Okay, well, I'll just move through it. My fun thing with Zoom. We have 25, welcome, welcome everybody. It is two and a half minutes away from starting. And um, this is great. I love that you all are staying so loyal to Garden Coach. And this is why I'm doing it from my home today. I'm, a, I'm officially on vacation until next Wednesday. I go back into Chalet to work next Wednesday. And, um, and uh, but I wanted to keep the continuity of the, um, the Garden Coach every two weeks so that, um, so that, so that it doesn't, it wouldn't get messed up. So, because I, so you all are being so loyal. I just don't know what the silly thing is. Hmm. Okay, so in two more minutes, we'll, we'll get started. And um, I will answer all of your questions. Uh, if during the presentation you have questions, please um, put them in the chat, no, in, in the, the, the Q&A box, uh, rather than the chat box. I can keep better track of um, the, um, the questions in the, the Q and A column, okay? And I'll stay on as late, late as I need to to answer your questions. Okay, and okay, we're one minute away and we'll go, we'll go ahead and get started pretty quick here. 32 people, bravo, bravo everybody. Welcome, welcome. I'm Jennifer Brennan, the garden coach. I'm technically on vacation, so I won't be at the store today if you go in to the store, um, but they all have this handout so that they'll, they'll know what you're asking for when you go in and, um, and ask. So I think let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, welcome everybody. Okay, here we go. Oh no, what is that? All right, I opened up the chat box. All right, now here we go. Let me get this out of the way. All right, so these are the topics that I, I'm, I'm, I wanna cover today. So the nursery is open now. Um, we're gonna be talking about planting cool season plants. Um, that one of the spring chores that you need to think about doing is dividing um, um, perennials, summer, bloom, summer blooming perennials. I'm gonna go over that. Spring lawn care, the first treatment of the year is usually applied um, on the 15th of April. Um, you wanna treat early to prevent any lawn diseases from getting started. You also want to prevent any alien insect damage like the boxwood um, um, leaf miners and the viburnum leaf beetles. Number one enemy out there is rabbits, rabbits, rabbits. And so you want to repel them before they start feeding on your garden and then introduce their babies that they're going to be having pretty soon. And uh, again, um, you, you, oh, now is the time to plant summer blooming bulbs in pots to get an early start on the season. Spring cleanup, you always know, clean up the garden and then apply preen and mulches everywhere to prevent the weeds from you know, coming back. Um, fungal disease protection, get ready to start it within the next two weeks. I'm gonna show you the plants that need the most protection, uh, especially since we're getting all this rain. Then weed control, for the uh, Ficaria nevis, used to be called Ranunculus Ficaria, uh, and then also um, weed prevention in, you know, in, in the garden beds. So this is what the nursery is, is starting to look like. They're getting the plants all over the place. So you need to you know, you, you know, be, you know, put that on your calendar to come in and get back out into the nursery. Now, this is when um, you wanna plant cool season plants and you wanna get hellebores planted in, pansies, boy, there's, you know, if there's ever, you know, the spring flower, it's the pansy. Primroses are great. That's what is in the middle of the photo here. Iberis is, um, they also call that um, um, candy tuff. And then cyclamen. Cyclamen are wonderful, cool season plants. We have, we had, we have all these and had all these hellebores. We're going to be getting more of the same ones in and you'll be able to buy them off the benches out in the nursery over in the shade perennial area. 
and boy, they just look gorgeous. And many of them have the upright heads, you know, where, because of the ivory prints being in their heritage. And oh my gosh, you can just see all the different varieties that you know that we that we have coming in. Okay, and my favorites, I love the violas. I love the perennial violas like this Etain. And um, you, they're, they're, what's so great about them is that they're fragrant. They're beautiful. They come back when you site them properly. You know, put them in a well-drained area where they can get some sunlight. Morning sunlight is best. Afternoon is a little, it, it, it's too hot in the late, in the late summer. But, um, but, but oh, they, this is an excellent one to add to your garden. Well, we have 55 people. Welcome aboard, everybody. I am so happy that I decided to keep the, um, the, the continuity of every two weeks going. Um, I'm on vacation, so I'm not in chalet uniform. And, and then you can see I'm in my, I call it my conservatory. So these are all my, all my rabbits, but ferns behind me in my corner right here. And then I also have a lot of two huge big Boston ferns. <clears throat> so, um, but back to the topic, cool season plants, plant them right now. <clears throat> here, here's how the hellebores were set up, just beautiful varieties. And I love that dark burgundy. And then this is the ivory prince right there. And then these are the double, the double um, primroses. They look like little miniature roses and just, it's a beautiful plant that also has the potential of coming back every season. Now is the time um, that you wanna um, plant those, that's the spring garden and the spring, the spring vegetable garden. And, um, you know, just, I love, I love, you know, getting the seeds. I think I have, yeah, make sure you come in. We keep reordering the seeds and they keep selling out like crazy. So we've got Renee's Gardens. That's my personal favorite. Then we also have um, Hudson Valley and then Botanical Interests and then the Seed Savers Exchange. And there's something, there, there are great varieties in every one of them. So it's just so fun, you know, to, to, to keep shopping. So make sure you get those seeds and, um, you know, to get them, to get them in to, um, to your garden here. All right. Now the garden planner, I had shown this in, in um, the last um, uh, garden coach and I love this. Um, and we used to sell these. I found them, I found a case of these in one of the storage cabinets that we had to clear out when we redid the receiving area and, and our, our facilitating area. And so I've been giving them away for people and you put the red line on um, the frost, the last, the average date of the last frost. So that's the frost free date. That's May 15th here. And then by crop tells you when you first plant outside and then when you know, when, you know, then when you, if you need to start them inside and then at the check marks show when the high, you know, when you can, when your harvest is. And then there's one on the backside for the late, the late, you know, late summer into for the fall planting. And we still have quite a few. So come in and get your, 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 your copy if you haven't gotten one. Now, the spring, the, one of the major spring chores that we should be doing right now is, 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 to, is dividing the summer flowering plants. Those are things like, um, like daisies, and, uh, and I've got a list I'll show you, but the reason that you want to, um, want to divide them is if they're flowering less in, than in recent years, if they've sprawled out, you know, if it's a much wider clump than, than you'd had before, or if there's a dead center, we call that like a donut hole. If when you're looking as, at the plant as they're just emerging from the ground, you see that donut hole, that means it's time to divide. So, so you separate the crowns and then replant them. And you wanna clear out any of the dead you know, material in the center. And then also, also, because what that does, that triggers new growth as they, you know, as they, so they can grow out and fill in better. And most plants need to be divided every three to four years. Um, so th there are two main patterns of growth of perennials and grasses. They're the clumping types, they grow out from the center. And then there's the spreading types, which are runners. And you know, they run out and run over and spread out in, you know, in the garden. Um, this is a daisy over on the left-hand side and then a, a lamium 
um, it's called frosted dead nettle on the, um, on the, on the right hand side. And the key is timing. <clears throat> so, so you wanna allow enough time for the roots to get reestablished before the season gets hot and dry. And, and then, so you wanna avoid the heat of summer. You wanna avoid the, the dry spells. So now's the time you, you'll be seeing the shoots coming up you know, out of the clumps any day now. Now, if it's a spring blooming one, you don't wanna do that one or those varieties. The spring blooming ones are better divided at the end of the summer. <coughs> Pardon me. If you do that right now, you really in, you know, interrupt their blooming pattern. Excuse me. <coughs> I breathed in too hard. Hold on. Okay. Ah, team. Now, you want to opt, you want to minimize the loss of, of, of bloom. So as I was explaining, summer and fall bloomers are divided in the spring. Um, so like summer blooming phlox, um, spring bloomers are divided in the fall. So like columbine would be going in bloom in the next month and a half. So you don't want to, you don't want to mess with those. Um, so these are the steps for dividing. So things like daylilies and irises, um, you know, you can, you, you, you know, you dig up the plant, divide it up either by using a shovel or an ax, depending on how, like the Siberian iris, um, you, you almost need to use an ax to chop them, to chop them up. And then you want to remove or trim off any of the excess green, no green, and then replant and water them in. These are the examples of the perennials that can be divided. Uh, now, and you know what? I thought I put that on the list and I guess, oh, I did, no, I didn't. I did not. So if you've got your camera, take, take a photo of this screen. So you've got that. And um, so, you know, Iris, uh, Eubatorium, Eubatorium has, um, has a new name, Achilles, Veronica, Vernonia, so the doggo is um, um, <coughs> goldenrod, alcamilla, ladies mantle, leucanthemum, and dendranthemum. Those are the those are the daisies. Salvias, heucheras, uh, phlox like the garden phlox, monarda, coreopsis, scabiosa, penstemon, um, bisostegia, rudbeckia, echinacea, asters. Stachys, coreopsis, and sedums. So these are the ones that you can you can and should divide now if they have those signs, if they sprawled or not blooming, and or um, they have a donut hole as a center. Okay, if anyone needs me to go back to this later, I will. Okay, so the example of grasses and sedges that can be divided now: Carex, those that's the sedge, Calamagrostis, um, Deschampsia, Sporobolus, Budalua. Mulimbergia and Panicum. All of those um, are, would be wonderful to divide right now. If you're not dividing them out, at least make sure they're cut down. And ideally that should have been done in March, but it's still early. Um, and um, so if you haven't cut them down, you can still you can do that. And the best way to cut grasses down is to take twine, tie them at six inches from the ground. And then I'd try another, another ring of twine about 10 or 12 inches up from the ground. And then I cut in between where the two twines are, 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 are tied. The top bundle is held together. So you're not chasing grass leaves all over the place. You just take that bundle, put it in the yard waste in the curb or put it in a yard waste bag and you're done. You're done. And then cut the, cut the lower string off the bottom part. Okay, great. Now, moving on, one of the most common questions is, how can I fix my lawn? What's the best thing I need to do for my lawn and what and when to use? So Scott's has a, a great product. They either call it the Scott's triple action for seeding or Scott's step one for seeding. I'm gonna move ahead to show you. This is it right here. It's either that blue bag or that the light blue bag or the new blue bag. And they, they did the new blue bag called the, the Scott's turf builder with triple action built for seeding. Nothing like a complicated name, huh? They came up with that last year and I thought they were gonna phase out the Scott, Scott step one for seeding. So the, the triple action, they both have the exact same 
uh, ingredients in, in the same, same type of fertilizer, a 21, 22, I believe it's four um, you know, formulation, but they also have mesotrione, which is the same ingredient as, um, oh my God, I'm just thinking, I'm forgetting the trade name, but, but the mesotrione is wonderful because it, it kills creeping bent grass in lawns. It prevents any weed seeds from germ germinating except grass, you know, your desirable grasses. And I'm gonna go back this way just to go into this. Okay. <clears throat> so what I love to encourage people to do is put this down. <clears throat> and when you realize what a great product that mesotrione is, or tenacity is the trade name. Um, I realized that when five years ago, when I found the, the Scott Step 1 for seeding, and realized that they've taken all of their pre-emergence out of the majority of their products for weed control and, and early weed prevention in lawns and, and, and put in mesotrione. That's how good this stuff is. When Syngenta was able to you know, develop the granular form of it instead of the liquid form, it just changed the whole game. And Scott's got the, Scott's got the right to it for the first seven years. So, um, so anyway, that, that's the one I like to encourage people to use now and then wait two weeks to see how all the brown areas fill in because, because the dormant grass plants can have the capacity of growing three inches in each direction. So if you just have six inch holes about like that, the grass plants, when they wake up after you fertilize them, will grow in three inches. If you wait two weeks after you've applied the fertilizer with this pre-emergent in it, you may be totally stunned about how great the lawn looks even without overseeding. So I tell people, wait, then you know how much seed you need to get. Okay, and then, then you come back in, in uh, at the end of May, which is the Memorial Day feed or fertilizer. And that can be applied from May 31st to June 15th and just use a good quality organically based fertilizer like the Espoma lawn fertilizer. And I'm gonna show you that one too. So again, spring lawn care, start with fertilizer and the pre-emergent weed control. That also controls the crabgrass. And that's the main reason we put pre-emergent down. But with this new product, it, it prevents all, it prevents nut sedge, it kills existing nut sedge plants, prevents any of the nut sedge nutlets from emerging, and also prevents any of the seeds from germinating from nut sedge. It is incredible. Okay, and then it prevents any other seeds from germinating, so any weed seeds that are out in the lawn. It technically is not labeled to kill weeds, existing weeds, but what's really cool to watch and look at is when you see dandelions that are in your yard, where, when you've applied, you know, that the Scott Step 1 for seeding, it does the same thing to them that it does to the creeping bent grass. It burns the chlorophyll out, which means all of the weeds have big white blotches on them and it dings them up so badly. You know, it beats them up so badly that they really, when you wanna get rid of them, when it warms up a bit, you spray with the weed killer, it kills them immediately. So I love using this, this product and I love encouraging people to use this. Okay, so then the dormant grass plants, um, you know, again, have the capacity of filling in every three inches. And then you wanna watch this coincide timing to get your timing right for doing your pre-emergent to prevent the crabgrass from germinating. So you wanna start when the forsythia is in bloom and that's gonna be happening in the next 10 days. And then you wanna make sure you get your pre-emergent and your first fertilizer down before lilac's going to bloom. Because at the temperature that lilac's going to bloom, 55 degrees, that's when crabgrass seeds can germinate. So you wanna make sure to kind of always watch your landscape or your neighbor's landscape when you see Persithia, that means oh, go straight to chalet, get your pre-emergent and early fertilizer to put on your lawn. And then if you're watching and you see lilacs in bloom, you're gonna to be too late, okay? So kind of kind of keep an eye, keep an eye on that, all right? And, and here it is again, and it, the active ingredient is the mesotrione plus the, um, the, the, the fertilizer. It prevents creeping bent grass, um, prevents nimble will, kills nut sedge, prevents uh, the seeds uh, that germinate of most weeds and does not, um, um, and, but it doesn't prevent grass seed germination. And then the, this, the nutrient levels are phenomenal. I, I love it, I love it. And there's enough of, of the phosphorus in it and it's legal to have the phosphorus in it because if you're gonna be you know, putting seed down, all right? 
Oh, okay. Oh, this is an example of what the burnt out chlorophyll looks like. Okay, so this is in my own lawn. This was um, a year ago and on April 14th. And I had put this down um, the week before. And then I, I went out, you can see the creeping bent grass. This is right off my driveway. There's my driveway. And the creeping bent grass is on the, in that, left, that left photo is all white. It is so rewarding to go out and see it's all white. And you know that it's gonna be, it's dying. And then I had to show you, even though it's not labeled to, to take these weeds out, excuse me, um, I'm showing you what the dandelions look like after and what the mesotrion is doing with that. I mean, I'm not kidding. It just beats them up so badly that they get a real poor start. And then when you do use your, your weed control on it, it, knocks them out immediately. And so you can see that you can see the, 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 the dandelions and then some creeping charley. I can't believe I admit it, that's my lawn. But anyway, and then this is what it looked like, what the, the chlorophyll looks like. Uh, oh, and this is the creeping Charlie in the backyard up on the, on, on the left hand. And then there's that dandelion on, down on the, on the right hand picture. And this was two weeks later uh, last year. And you can see what a job it does. Now, everybody, this is the lawn care calendar that um, Bill Lewinberger and I um, put together years ago just to help you. So you can look at each month and decide what you need to do in your lawn. So here in April, you wanna clean up any debris from the winter. You wanna over seeds, so you wanna put your seeds out in the, in the bare spots. But remember I said, wait until after you've done um, the, the fertilizer and the, and the pre-emergent. On here it says, core aerification if your soil is really compacted. And, and most of our, our lawns aren't that bad. So we, I like to tell people to wait until September just to do your annual core aeration. But there are a lot of people out there that do do it in the spring, but we like to recommend you wait till, till, till the fall. And then, then the last one in April is apply, apply the pre-emergent weed control for annual weeds at the end of the month until the first week of May. And um, if you're going to use an organic form like corn gluten meal, then make sure you don't need to add any overseeding. Make sure you don't want to put any lawn for seed down because corn gluten meal prevents any seeds from germinating. Okay, so be aware of that. It's, it's a good earth-friendly natural, but it will prevent things from, um, you know, from getting, you know, getting started. Okay, and I'll talk about the rest of these as we get to them with the garden coach. Now, this is the organic-based fertilizer that is my favorite. It's the Esfoma lawn fertilizer. We call it the red bag uh, because it has that red label or that, the red packaging. What's great about it is it's slow release because it's organically based. We call it a long-term feed and it's juiced. When we say juice, it has a little extra nitrogen in it. Um, so it's a 15% nitrogen, zero phosphorus, because by law you can't have, you're not supposed to have phosphorus unless you're seeding and then 5% potassium. And um, I, I've used this for years on my own, my own yard and I love it. And research has shown that if you use an organically based lawn fertilizer, it will outcompete and, and it, it, it encourages the, the beneficial microbes in our soil, and they will outcompete the pathogens that cause the diseases. So the more organic fertilizer lawn food, you know, the less disease you'll have on your lawn, in your lawn. Now, this is a new product that works for six months, and it came about, and I was talking about it last year, it fertilizes for three months. So you put it down in April, that takes care of May, June, and July. It prevents new broadleaf weeds for up to six months. So it has a pre-emergent that prevents broadleaf weeds from, okay, you know, April, May, June, July, August. Really cool. And then it, it prevents new crabgrass because it has a pre-emergent in it and it will actually kill large crabgrass, you know, that, that's if you use it later in the season. And then it keeps the, it keeps the lawn green for up to three months. So this is kind of an all-in-one that is, is, is really easy to use. And that's enough for 5,000 square feet. So um, okay, here we go. And then I love showing you this. that if you are going to put seed down, then this shows you. And this was, um, this was always on the, the back of our private label grass seed bags. And we've, we've changed it now. But I always show this in my presentations. The one on the left is too light. The one on the right is too heavy, and the one in the middle is just right. So it actually looks like 
the poppy seeds, and I've said this for years, on the hot dog buns, the Rosen's buns over at Irving's um, for Red Hot Lovers. And that's Andy, the owner of Irving's. And so we just have this big joke. I send people in to, you know, to, 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 to see, and, uh, and then the charts down at the base. So when you go into, you know, to Irving's to get your hot dog, to, you can say that you're buying that hot dog so you can see how, you know, you can have a physical, you know, example in your hands on how thick to spread the grass seed. Andy loves hearing that. All the, all the chefs over there love that too. Okay, here we go. Now the early season lawn diseases, haven't seen any just yet. It's been too cold, you know, too, we've warmed up and cooled down and warmed up and cooled down. So have not seen any dollar spot, but this is what we're gonna probably see first. And the causal agent is, is Claritinia. And you know, it, the reason they call it dollar spot is it's usually a collection of silver dollar size, tan, brown, tan colored or white spots in the lawn. And you can see the hourglass lesion on that blade. And so it looks, you know, it looks like an hourglass. And then it has, it has red, red brown margins. See, like, see, look at the very top. See, it's that red brown on each bar, margin of the lesion. And it's usually caused by um, warm days and cool nights. So it's one of the first diseases that we start seeing when things start warming up. And it's caused by prolonged leaf wetness. So when there's the dew and the, and there's high humidity. And that's usually what happens in this in the springtime. We'll get you know light light rains, and then things stay moist overnight, and it warms up during the day. And um, it also can be uh, you'll see more of it where we have dry soil areas and low nitrogen for you know fertility. So so that's the first thing. I, I haven't seen any yet. I'll be sure to let you know. Now I want everyone to understand that the preventative of all of the fungal diseases on the lawn should be done in the spring. It's not yet, not yet. When you wanna apply it, it's the first two weeks of May, but I wanna talk about it now so you can kind of keep in you know, your head. Now, the last two years, the summers were so hot and so dry that we did not see a lot of the fungal leaf spot diseases that we traditionally see in our lawns. But, um, but we've been getting enough rain this, you know, this, you know, this spring which is a blessing, thank goodness, thank goodness. But so if you've had, you know, traditional brown patch or summer patch on your lawns, you wanna get any of these products, the Immunox, the Infuse, or the BioAdvanced Fungal Control. And these are the hose-in sprayers. I know when I left town to go on my vacation, we had the Infuse in stock with the hose-in sprayer. We were waiting on the BioAdvanced and the, and, the, and the Immunox. But I do know that Infuse was, was there. So. So, you know, you get some of that and spray it and it lasts for 14 days. So if you spray it like the first week of May and then the second week of May, that will help prevent, that's when the diseases inoculate the newly growing grass plants. And that's, you know, that's when they can get, you get infected and then the disease shows up later. So it's a preventative thing that we really need to focus on. Now, boy, public enemy number one and they, they're all over my garden the rabbits and you know i've shown you this slide before and when they damage arbor body like that the arbor body does not does not recover and then this tree that they worked on this service berry up on the right hand picture that plant died they stripped all the bark off the lower level of it and um and then they just butcher roses this was my own personal rose down the, the bottom right they butcher it so you know, terrible, terrible. So you want to use the repellents. Plant Skeed is the very best. Uh, it's a blood-based product. Uh, the liquid, you want to start with the liquid, spray the plants that they're actually feeding on. Once you've repelled them with that, and the cool thing about this product is when you spray it on plant parts on a day where it's not raining, you know, and, and let it dry for 24 hours, it stays on the, the, the parts that have been sprayed for 60 days. Incredible, even if it rains. Now, once you've in, insulted in, in the, in the animals, then you can come in afterwards with the granular and I sprinkle it around the perimeters of my beds and that, that keeps them out. When they come back in checking, they smell that, you know, the, the fragrance and they, it keeps them away. So we've got, we've got it in um, the quart size spray bottles. That's on the upper uh, left-hand photo and then the, the granular bag. And then down below, 
that's the gallon size. And everyone thinks it's a concentrate. It, because it's blood-based, people were so grossed out by the concentrate, they don't sell it anymore. So this is just a pre-mixed large quantity amount that you can put in a tank sprayer, like the one, the tank sprayer um, right over here on the lower left or the lower right, um, and then spray, okay? The, the best, the best, go to the Plant Skeed uh, webpage to see more research. And um, Alan Alford is the owner of the company and it, it, they, they, it, it, they just are doing a beautiful job. So, so this is the one to use, it's the one to use. Now, the other thing I have to make everybody aware of, and you know, because I have seen a couple samples at the microscope and uh, with the, the boxwood leaf miner damage, and it looks like winter burn on on, but but it's more blotchy. It's more blotchy. So when you look at the photo on the upper left hand, you can see it's bumpy and blotchy, and it, and when you turn the leaf over and if you peel the the, the underneath epidermal layer off you can see the maggots, which is the larva inside the leaf. So the, the adult emerges at, you know, in the end of May, the adults don't have to feed. They just mate and then lay eggs on the new growth. And then those eggs hatch and those larva or the, the maggots feed and eat the mesophyll cells all summer long. And then they stay dormant in the plant over winter and then they pupate and you can see from the maggot stage uh, and, the, and the far right photo come down into that center photo, you can see how they pupated and that's the pupa inside the leaf. And then, then once, they, once they mature, they chew a hole in the bottom of the leaf and, and emerge out. And you can see the pupa um, sac that still stayed on the underneath side of the leaf as the adult flew away. So that this is so distinctive. And if you're not sure if your plant has it or not, bring a sample in and I can, I can verify it with you. I'll put it under the microscope and show you. So, so be aware of this. And it might not just be winter damage. It might not just be, you know, boxwood um, 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 tanker. It could very well be the boxwood leaf miner. These insects moved into the area um, seven years ago, and they've just been spreading like wildfire ever since. So now is the time to treat with a systemic insecticide. You mix it based on the height of the shrub, usually boxwood are three to four feet tall. So it's three ounces per foot, and, uh, and you mix that and for the 12-month control and pour it right down the center of the plant where it, it drenches the root collar. It's so effective, just so effective. Oh, and this was my video so I can gross you out. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this. So, so you can see, see how they wiggle when you peel open the, the and then this is what it looks like when you look at on, on the deck uh, at the microscope. See, I peeled the the, on the, uh, the epidural surface off the bottom and that's what was showing. And then this is what it looks like up close. So if you see those blotchy lumpy um, surfaces, that's, you know, that's, that's boxwood leaf miner, okay? Now the other insect that you wanna be on the lookout, and if you're, the, the photo down in the center show, shows the cup leaves that at the tips, and when you have boxwood psyllid, it's an insect, and we've been dealing with psyllid for the 35 years I've been here, and it, it's an insect that hatches it, it every, the end of April, um, early May, and then the larva, are actually sucking the juices of the plant with a stylus mouth part. And it causes those leaves to curl cup up to form the cups. And because of the cup, technically you could use a contact insecticide to kill these, um, these the, 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 the nymphs. But when the leaves are cupped over the surface, it's hard to get that spray in. So that's why I like to use systemic insecticides. And then you just pour it, um, again, I was gonna, talk and let me see the next picture. Oh, here it is, yeah. Okay, this is the liquid form of the, um, the insecticides. And um, it has traditionally been aminoclopred. Um, they, they came out, there's a new one now and it's bio-advanced rather than Bayer. And it's a new form of, well, I'm gonna come back to this. I'll come back to this. It's a, it's a granular 
with the fertilizer and the insecticide in it. And the insecticide they've switched back to is acephate, uh, which um, um, was what was in orthene and isotox. I know. Anyway, I'm acephate is a systemic insecticide, and it does not. It doesn't. It doesn't affect any of the bees. So, um, so, 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 and technically, imidacloprid does not either. But, but, that's another whole story. Okay, now. Viburnum leaf beetle larva moved into the area six years ago. I guess the, the boxwood leaf miter has been eight years. This is six years. And these overwinter, if you look, these overwinter as eggs on this, the very fine stems of, of the shrubs. And then they hatch usually the end of April, early May, and they can strip all the leaves by feeding on them off in three to five days. Most people are leaving for work one day and they see a few holes in the leaves. By the time they, they, they get to it on the weekend, half, half or all the leaves have been eaten off. This is how voracious these, these, these insects are. Then once they've fed for four to six weeks, they drop to the ground and pupate and then come back as the adult. And this is just close up of samples from two years ago, people brought these samples in. You can see how they ate all the leaves off and then they were eating the stem down to the core. They're just evil. And then this is what the adults look like in, in July uh, when they reemerge. They don't do nearly as much damage as the larvae do, uh, but they mate and then they're laying the eggs out when they're feeding at the end of the summer. So if you use a systemic on your, um, on your viburnums, it really controls the problem because any insect that is feeding on the leaf gets killed. And so it stops the whole life cycle. So, you know, so, and, and let me go back. This is, these are the products that you wanna use, either the, the BioAdvance, used to call Bayer, or the Bonide. And it's the 12 month tree and shrub liquid insecticide. And then um, you, you, you base that, on the height of the shrub, it's three ounces per foot of shrub. And then you pour that right at the root collar where the trunk goes into the ground. And you can do that right now. You can do that right now. Okay, now, now, oh, let's go to the fun stuff. Okay, so now, now, now it's time to pot up any of your summer flowering bulbs. You can come and buy them. And then technically you don't wanna plant them outside until the frost free date, which is May 15 but you can plant them in containers you know, inside so, and water them well, fertilize them, so that they actually, in the warm inside, the roots will grow inside the pot, and then you'll get a shoot that comes up, and then um, when, when it's, when after the dangerous frost, a, a frost has passed, you plant them outside. But we've got gorgeous dahlias, the uh, elephant ears, uh, that's Siberian iris, um, the begonias, the caladiums, cannas, and lilies. Oh, and this is what they look like on the shelf. Um, they're just fabulous. And you can see all the different types of, um, of dahlias that are there. The lilies are phenomenal. Now the lilies are hard enough that you can leave them out in the garden. Um, dahlias, begonias, all the rest I'm gonna show you need to be lifted or the, the tubers need to come up out of the ground over the winter. Uh, we've got these, these gorgeous tuberous begonias like the pendulum orange, pendulum pink, and then the crisp white, just incredible, gorgeous ones. Oh, and then gladiolus. Oh my gosh, what beautiful, beautiful cut flowers, you know, is all the different gladiolus. And we've got the tall ones and we have the short ones. So be sure and read the label when you're looking, you're looking at them. Uh, then cannas. Cannas also, they need to be lifted, you know, over the winter, but you can start them inside and then get them, you know, give them that head start. Or if you're busy, you know, busy, wait till the, the ground, you know, the, the danger of frost, May 15th has happened, you can put them out in the ground. I like to get them to start early and they're wonderful container plants. And, um, and again, check the, the cannas because we've got the three to four foot ones. We also have the 24 inch ones that are great in pots. You know, really cool. And then, and then you just can't beat an elephant ear. And we had the the mammoth ones, 
and we had just the, the, the large ones and you can see the different sizes of them. And these are, they like it warm, warm, warm. So these are the best to start inside, really give them a good head start so they're ready to go after the danger of frost has passed. This is also the best time to get your potatoes, your sweet potatoes, garlic, and, and then we have asparagus, the, you know, the perennial um, vegetable. So, you know, so, you know, make sure you get those before, before they're gone, you know, okay. Now, this is bad news. Uh, even before I left on my vacation, I had people coming in and, and asking, they'd seen this Vicaria nevis coming up in their lawns and in their garden beds. We'd had a real problem with them because of the wet springs that we had two years ago. These things, every seed germinated on these things. And it, this is an alien weed. It's not native to here. And, and, and it's called lesser, and that le lesser celandine. And um, it, it is just so invasive. These are photos from over in Ohio from uh, my good friend, Dr. Boggs, Joe Boggs over at Ohio State University. You can see how they will just take over a whole area. And the reason for that is that, and you have to be careful because marsh marigold looks very similar. And marsh marigold is an, a, a native spring ephemeral that is not invasive. And you, know, but, and you can see it only has five petals where um, the, the Fricaria uh, nevis has um, an eight petals, eight to nine petals all around. And what makes it so bad, this is again, the marsh marigold, but what makes it so bad is that it, it has these tubers that spread and spread and spread and it's almost impossible to get rid of these tubers. And it's, it's, it's the, the, the life habit is so, you know, hard to understand. People think they've just sprayed it and gotten rid of it when they spray anything on it, but it's what we call an extreme ephemeral. And it has these little bulbils up on the, on, on the, the foliage parts of the plant that when the, when, the, when the leaves drop off, these bulbils just drop into the soil and turn into um, the tubers. And so see this extreme ephemeral, the leaves have dropped off and then those little bulbils drop down into the ground and then turn and develop into those tubers. And I mean, they can just, you know, expand and expand and expand. So the best way to control it in the lawn, you wanna, and you wanna use um, anything like a lawn fertilizer that has 2,4-D, MCPA, MCPP, dicamba, or triclopyre. So the chickweed clover and oxalis has, has those in it. Um, the weed beater ultra also has it in it. And you can use the weed beater ultra when it's cooler and the cell temperatures are cooler outside. It's very effective. Now, you can also use Sedgender, which is um, the product that kills nut sedge uh, and it's got sulfantrazone. It will also kill the, um, the lesser salandine in turf. You don't wanna use any of these products in garden beds because they have a, 60, uh, a, a 30 to 60 day um, uh, life in the soil and it can it can kill your desirable plants your desirable perennials so here's the weed beater ultra and the chickweed clover and oxalis and in concentrate two different concentrate sizes are ready to spray and then we also have there is a hose and sprayer i don't like using that i'd rather use the concentrate put it in a tank sprayer you have better control of that okay and then um then we also have very effective non-selective like with the iron hedida and you can spray that on, you know, on, on the leaves. And they, they also had, did some research to show that if you wait till they flower, that, that's the lesser salandine or the, the Rocaria nevis. If you wait till they're in flower, all of these herbicides work better on them. But you, there's a fine line. You don't wanna wait too long because then they're ready to go dormant. If there's no foliage, you can't, you can't affect, you, you can't, the, the herbicides won't work. Okay, so now moving on, this is a good time because as you're looking at your beds and cleaning your beds, you can actually see where the grasses have grown into your flower beds. And this product is wonderful. It's called Grass Be Gone and it, Ortho Company has it now. It used to be from um, Fertilone called Over the Top. And I love the, the active ingredient. It, I just have always loved the name. This was the same name that it was back when I was in college. It's called fluazaflop, you know, fluazaflop. 
and and it and it actually kills the grass plants and doesn't kill any of the broadleaf plants that you're spraying it, whether it's roses or ground cover, and you just spray it over the top of those plants and it's just gonna kill. And it works best early as the grass plants are just getting started. So make sure you get some of this if you've been dealing with trying to get you know, the grass up. Now, the other thing that you should be doing right now is spring cleanup. <laughs> and the reason is you wanna get rid of any of the, see, this. this these are the seed pods from um, a, a tree in my backyard. And oh my God, they just cause a mess. And so you wanna rake up gently any of the debris from the lawn and also on any of the flower beds. You wanna get a lot of the leaves out of the flower beds. You wanna keep them and chop them up and use them as mulch, you can do that. But um, you wanna rake this up. You also wanna cut down your ornamental grasses. I mentioned that a little bit earlier. This is, this is my garden and I'm proud to say that they've been cut down. I should have photos, but I got in too late last night to get any photos. They'll be in, they'll be in, in next garden coach, okay? And then cut down any pe you know, peonies and irises like I did here. And then, then plan to protect any susceptible plants from the fungal problems. And I'm gonna go forward and come back to go through this list. Okay, and the, like I said, you wanna either use the Immunox or the Infuse, Propraconazole or Microbutanil. These are systemic fungicides that are, you spray on the leaves and it stays in the plant for 14 days. Um, and I'm just gonna show you, there's also the drenches, the soil drenches. And the one that, that, that BioAdvanced redid um, was the one, the all-in-one rose and flower care right here, liquid, but they also had in a granular. And, um, and I, I contact my buyers because I, I found some down in Arkansas when I was down there. And they have the new one. It's I couldn't I could only find the granular, but it's it's for it's for shrubs. It's shrub control, and it has acephate as the insecticide in it. So we should be getting that in as well. The the Rose RX is the same as the the BioAdvanced All in One, um, but it doesn't have the fertilizer in it. The All in One has a 914.9, which is a phenomenal fertilizer for roses and anything that's flowering. And then, but if you don't want to, if you want to use your, your own fertilizer and just take care of your diseases and insects, use the R, the Rose RX drench. I'm going to go back this way again. I wanted to show you that the, the, the diseases that we need to pre, you know, pre, prevent are apple scab, and those usually are on crab apples, apple trees, and cotoneaster, um, black spot on roses, rust on roses. Botrytis bud blight on peony and roses, volutella stem blight on pachysandra and boxwood, powdery mildew on lilac, monarda, roses, and much more. And then the lawn patch diseases, summer patch and brown patch on, on turf and lawns. Pro products can rescue those plants, but the key is to prevent. You wanna get the, the fungicide on the surface of the leaves before the disease is active. Because if you have that insecticide in there, when the disease, the spore lands on the, the, the leaves and tries to inoculate, that active ingredient inside the leaf tissue prevents it from getting in. So again, you wanna apply it to the plants while they're healthy to prevent inoculation. And then what's great about the systemic products is they stay in the leaves for 14 to 30 days, depending on the product, even with rain. And then uh, that's such a blessing. And then you want to then you want to start using it at bud break on trees and shrubs, and repeat if the weather stays cold and rainy. Usually they say on the Immunox and the Infuse you do it three times, but if it stays cold and rainy, you can do it up to five times, and and it's every two weeks. Okay, and I talked about the the product, these two products, and then this is Earth Friendly Natural fungicides, and we've got the copper fungicide which is the liquid, which is copper soap, is in the little, the little bottle. And then it also comes in a spray ready to use. I don't have a photo of that. Then the other, the other copper fungicide is, is actually um, copper sulfate. And it's a powder. It's a little more challenging to use because you can mix it in a tank, but you have to keep the tank agitated so you have a suspended um, you know, infusion. Because if, you, if you're not agitating or shaking the tank, all of the, all the chemical goes down to the bottom. That's why I like the soap, the, 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 the copper octanoate, which is the copper soap. And because it, it mixes and stays mixed. 
And then the, the plain elemental sulfur, you can use that as a spray. Again, it's a suspended suspension. It's a suspension, so you have to keep it. Or you can dust and spray, spread this on the ground around the base of the plant. So those are the, those are the earth only natural types. But if it rains, you have to reapply these, all right? Now, these are the diseases, you know, apple scab, you get these on the crab apple, and you can see the leaf spot diseases up on the upper left hand. You can see what it does to the fruit. And then this is a close up of what, of what, what it actually looks like. But by the time it looks like this, there's nothing you can do about it because it got inoculated way back in May, you know, April and May. And when the, when the leaves are just emerging as baby leaves, they don't have a waxy cuticle on the leaf. So the spore can get in and get inoculated. So it, when, by the time you see this, we'll come in and say, oh, sorry, there's nothing you can do about it. So, you know, if you've seen this in the past and, and it bothers you to see it, come and get the product and, and apply preventatively. So you wanna apply it bud break, which is usually, you know, the first week in April uh, to the second week of April. And, um, and, that, and then, then anthracnose too. And we see anthracnose on oaks, we see it on um, dogwood, we see it on, um, on sycamore is the worst, sycamore is the worst, ashes. And then we also see it on um, pasta, depending on how warm and how uh, rainy our season is. We didn't see it the last year at all because we had a half inch of rain in April, only a half inch of rain in May. So we didn't see a lot of these diseases last year, but we're getting good rainfall right now. So be prepared, be prepared. Oh, and then black spot on roses. And, and black spot on roses, one of the tricks the Rosarians always use, I spray with infuse, you know, infuse and or immunox, but you can also sprinkle elemental sulfur down around the base of the roses. And, um, and then it, it kills the black spot in the soil so it doesn't grow and it doesn't sporulate and inoculate the lower leaves. So that's another thing. But boy, I sure like the systemics because they are so effective and they don't wash off in the rain, okay? Now, protective plant health care, you wanna fertilize appropriately. You wanna use, you know, if they've just been transplanted, use things like root and grow to help them get, you know, rooted in really well. And you wanna use, you know, like the, the, the grow liquid fertilizer also with, uh, always look to make sure you have the micronutrients included if it's just, you know, if it's a synthetic. Um, most of the um, 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 earth only natural or the organically based fertilizers have a lot of these uh, micros in them naturally. So, you know, so those are, those are the most effective things for proactive and plant health care. Oh, now, oh, we're getting right at 10 minutes till. This is, this is my garden. So this is what the garden coach is doing in her garden. And I, I showed you this last time where I spread all the Dr. Earth a veg mix over the surface. And I, I also used um, the chalet organic compost, uh, the chalet organically based compost. I love it, I love it. It has got such a great texture. So I just kind of mixed that over the tops of my, be of my beds. I got in too late. I had planted these seeds two weeks ago. I got in too late um, and, and um, so I didn't get a chance to, to see what has germinated. Uh, my husband was telling me that when I was gone, the birds were going after my garden. So I have a feeling they got all my peas. They ate all my pea, my pea um, seedlings as they were coming out. So I, I'll be replanting uh, over this weekend because I had time off, you know, so. so um, and then, you know, and then this is just showing all the things that have been cleaned up, you know, in my garden. I did, I did the cleanup on that. And then I'm being religious about putting the plant skid down. And I've, I've done the granular around all the borders of my beds. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, this weekend, I'm spraying anything that's emerging out of the ground with the liquid plant skid. They're just evil little creatures. Still, I'm, I'm, I'm finished with my snowdrops, but, um, but I'm loving all the spring blooms that are coming up. And so here's, here's to spring. So I'm gonna say thank you to y'all. Don't sign off yet. I'm going to, um, and 53 people are still here. Mm, thank you so much. Uh, it's just so wonderful to see the numbers. And, you know, I'll look forward to seeing you next week when I'm back in the store. Uh, I'm going to start with the, um, the Q&A column here. Let's pull this up here. And um, let's do this.
Okay. Oh, good question. Pam is asking if you should do preen under the mulch or over the mulch. You know what? Um, the preen is going to work best under the mulch because it makes um, a layer so that when the seedlings try to come up through it, they can't get through that, you know, that, you know, that chemical layer. So under the mulch and water it in, you know, water it in well. Pam, that's, that was a great question. Okay, uh, Denny Lubecki, hi. And is it too early to apply bio-advanced insect disease and mite control to my columbine, which have emerged to prevent leaf miners damaging them? No, Denny, it is not too early to do that at all. You know, go ahead and spray. I like to encourage people to spray late in the day because if there are any pollinators out, you don't want to have the, the leaves wet with, you know, with the liquid. It could kill a pollinator. But, you know, overnight, it's going to be absorbed in. And then once it's absorbed in and dry, it can't, it can't damage any of the pollinators. And boy, it's not, it's not too early at all. Good, good, good. And, you know, good, good eye and good planning. Okay. Well, and this is Susan. Hi, Susan. Okay. When should we spread the triple action that I bought at Chalet last week? Um, so Susan, I would, I would do it this weekend, you know, get it, get it down as soon as you can. Um, I'm doing mine this weekend. So you know, this, this weekend is, is a perfect timing. Good question. Okay. And then Kelly Cole had to hop off. Sorry, if redundant, um, sorry, I sent way too soon, which is better against creeping Charlie in flower beds. And when should I transplant a shrub rose? Um, if I'm not sending, if not sitting lawn, what is the best pre-emergent treatment for them? Okay, um, the okay, the, the in the in the in the beds to treat creeping Charlie, you want to use um, it's it's called a non-selective, so that would be the, anything like the iron hedida, because you know and it actually burns the um, it causes iron toxicity, so you would spray that on. The creeping Charlie in the flower beds, and then cover the perennials that are coming up to make sure you don't spray them. Okay, and then when should I transplant a shrub rose? Um, a shrub rose you can transplant right now. You know, the sooner the better. Get it dug and get it in. Use root and grow on it after you get it transplanted, and then it'll get established before it goes into bloom. And if not seeding the lawn, what is the best pre-emergent? Um, you know what? We have the bonide. Um, pre-emergent weed control, and and you know that 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 that's an excellent one. It's an excellent one. I think it's a little less money than the um, than the um, the Scott the Scott Step One for seeding. So it's it we carry the bonide you know the the, the bonide one. Okay, great questions. All right, and then oh here's Kelly again. I meant to ask chickweed club rock salis or sedge under better for a creeping chart. Neither of those. Neither of those. Kelly will work. Um, um, you should not use either of the chickweed clover and oxalis or the sedgender in flower beds. You want to use you want to use the iron hedida because it's a non-selective. Okay, and, and, and it has no cell persistence. Okay, and then here we go. All right, um, Pam, I have a hackberry tree that gets green. Uh, pimplish bumps every summer. Is there something I should put down now to prevent these? And if so, which was, you know, on the hackberry, that, that's actually an insect that causes that. And they've been living together for all these years that you really don't have to treat it. And it doesn't hurt the plant. And um, those are, that's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a gall, it's a gall producing insect. It's a little gall wasp. And um, don't worry about it. It, it, those are one of the things where it doesn't really hurt the plant, so you don't have to treat it and take care of it. Okay, great, great question, great question. Okay, and then here's Kelly again. Is it time to shear and trim the boxwoods? Yes, it is. You know, you want to you want to trim them now before the new growth starts. You're maybe about a half a month too late, but you know, do it quick. And because uh, I don't I don't think I've seen any new growth on mine just yet. So, so, but yeah, do it, do it quick, uh, okay? And then Susan again, any ideas on what to do with the small pine cones the spruce has shed all over underneath it? Oh, just leave it, you know, just leave them. I mean, if, unless it gets in the way um, of anything, 
um, just leave, you know, just, just leave them and they'll break down as a mulch. If you don't like the look of them, you can just, you can rake them up, but there's not a problem with that. Okay. And then Kim, is there a handout for this session? Yes, the handout was on the email uh, that was sent out to it. If you'd like, you can send um, your email address to um, um, Jennifer B at shallynursery.com and I'll send, the, I'll, send you, I'll send you the link. All right, um, okay, great. And I'll watch for Kim J. Jason, is the product BioAdvanced Rose Care 3-in-1 appropriate for boxwood too? Yes, it is. It's phenomenal for boxwood because, and you use it three times. You use it April 15th, which is coming up, um, June 1st and July 15th, every six weeks. And it has the fertilizer, the insecticide and a fungicide that prevents the, like the, box, the boxwood um, and, and blight. And then it also protects the box, the boxwood um, canker. So great question, great question. I love that product, it is fantastic. Okay, and then Marnie Kenny, how long does unused fertilizer and weed killer last? Okay, a fertilizer that's granular lasts forever and ever unless it gets wet. Okay, so it can be in the garage. Weed killers, if they, they're usually three to five years. And if they've been in a garage where they've been frozen and thawed for several years in a row, it's best just to get a new one. Okay, good question. And then this is uh, Mary Fiardo. What about Milorganite? Milorganite is a great product. Uh, one bag only covers 2,500 square feet at a 25 pound bag. So be aware of that. You have to get, you know, double the amount, you know, and then, and then um, it, it lasts, they usually say you wanna use it every six weeks to you know, kind of you know, just to stay you know, on track, but it's a great organically based fertilizer. Another benefit is it can repel in, insects. It can repel um, deer and rabbit from your lawn because it's, it's technically, um, um, they, they, they call it an, an, um, composted biosolids. Isn't that a nice, isn't that a nice, uh, term. Okay, but it, it's a great product. Very good product. Okay, and Diana, what is the worm inside hydrangea snowball leaves killing my shrubs? Okay, well, they, they call them, they call, they call them leaf tears, tears, because they, they, they hatch, and then, then they, they, they web, they form a webbing inside that causes the leaves to cup over them. Then they eat the tip, and then, then they pupate, and then leave as adults. So if you don't like that, and you can um, um, use, use the systemic insectic, insecticide on the viburnums and, and then the hydrangeas, and as the leaves are forming and the insect comes in, the first bite they take, it kills them. And so then they're not able to form the, you know, the, the, um, the cups of the leaves over it. I, 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 lo I love that systemic insecticide. Very good, very effective. And you do it early, do it now, it takes care of the problem. Okay, this is Betty Lehan. All surrounding neighbors have Creeping Charlie. Is there any hope for me? Oh man, I've been, cre I've been fighting Creeping Charlie in and out of neighbors' you know, yards all the time. If it's in the lawn, um, you know, just use the chickweed clover and oxalis killer on it. But see what happens, it, come, it creeps through my flower beds and comes back out into the lawn. And, and yeah, when the neighbors have it, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a battle, isn't it? Um, but again, the chickweed clover and oxalis does a real good job on it, you know, in a lawn. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, Diana, again, how to kill clover in a lawn? Well, chickweed clover and oxalis will do the trick. You can also use um, the, the, um, the, the bonide step two, and it, it is a granular that you put down and it will, it will kill the clover. You know, it will kill the clover. Okay. Good, good, good questions. All right, and then should butterfly bush be cut down already or wait when you know, pruning hydrangeas? Um, I like to prune the butterfly bush down to um, 12 to 18 inches from the ground right now. And, you know, and, then, and then you can trim it up afterwards where you see the, where the new growth comes out you know, if you still have some dead tips. Great, great, great questions. You guys are on the ball. Okay, and this is Jane. My, mag, my maples in the past have had black spots on their leaves. Does this hurt the trees? Okay, Jane, this is a, a disease called tar spot. And it's, it's usually a late summer, hot, 
rainy season disease. And it has to be really warm to inoculate the leaves. And usually what happens is the ones in the center of the plant that get inoculated. <coughs> and you don't notice it until the very end of the season. It is really like acne on a teenager. It never gets into the wood and it's not really a problem. So I, I try to tell people just to ignore it. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> when you talk too much, this happens. <coughs> Mm -mm. All right. Yeah, tar spot. Tar spot's been haunting me for years. I mean, when it first came around in the area, you didn't have summers that were so hot. So when the first time I I did it, I told people, well, you know what? We're probably not going to have a hot summer like this ever again. So I won't see again. And then we had all these hot summers <coughs> in a row. So that's called tar spot, and it really doesn't really doesn't hurt the plant. Okay. Now, Jason. Last fall, I dug out daffodil bulbs and put them in a bag without soil on the grass for storage. Now I see this bulb sprouting with growth. What should I do? Well, um, get them in the ground as quick as possible. And uh, they, they probably won't bloom this year. Wait, you, pull, you dug them out last fall. Oh, they will. They will bloom. Get them in the ground as quick as you can. Get, put some bulb food on them and keep them well watered. You may catch it. You may catch them and catch the bloom for them. Good, good. Okay, now, Ann Russell, do the lawn products remove violets? Okay, the chickweed, clover, and oxalis is, is labeled for, um, for killing wild violets. And on the label, it's under wild violet, not just violet. And yes, now, it may take two applications. So you spray one week and then wait two weeks and spray it again. And it will actually kill the leaf it, it, it takes down. It kills the feeder roots. It, it, depending on how large the plants are, the little tubers may stay and you might have to do it another year in a row. But, uh, but the chickweed clover and oxalis is labeled to kill wild violets. Great question, great question. And then this is, oh, Tanya, hi. Um, is Im Immunox good insecticide for all insects, including ticks cute? Well, first of all, Immunox is not an insecticide. Immunox is a, is a fungicide. And um, no, it, it's not gonna kill insects and, and ticks. If you're having a problem with ticks, I would probably get the granular form of the, um, either the Biodvance or the Bonide um, in, 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 in lawn insect killer and, and put that down you know, for that. Okay, but Immunox is a fungicide, okay? It only takes care of, of um, diseases, okay? And then Ann Russell, is there a product safe for dogs that removes creeping Charlie? Well, um, you can use the chickweed clover and oxalis and just leave the, keep the dog off of it for 24 hours. And then, and then to be, you know, to, you can water the area just to make sure any residue is off. And then after it's dry, it's fine. You know, it's fine. So, so, so that, that, you know, that's, I, I would, I, recommend that. Creeping Charlie is tough to get rid of. The, uh, the next best thing is the iron henida. And um, you spray that on the Creeping Charlie and it causes iron toxicity and it kills, you know, it kills the, the leaves. And that's just, that's just chelated iron. Okay. All right. And then Anna Westine, when is the best time to fertilize bulbs? Oh, the best time to fertilize the bulbs is now, you know, as you know, as, when they're in bloom, put the fertilizer down, and then when they finish blooming, like the daffodils, some of the daffodils are, you know, are going to be finishing. You know, make sure you put the fertilizer around them, as so when the foliage is still up, so it can recharge the the foliage. Great, great, great. And then my favorite is the the Dr. Earth bulb, you know, bulb food because it has that high high phosphorus. Um, okay, that and then I but there are some chats that I'm gonna you know come in and I mean I'm gonna enlarge this. Watching the time. Oh, we're not too bad. Okay. And let's go up here. Oh, hi, would you please show us an iris tuber that's been divided? Uh, actually, oh, this is Jay Sherwich. Uh, the iris tubers, I was talking about Siberian iris more, and I, but I did have the iris tuber. The iris tubers are actually better to divide after they finish flowering. So I, I, I need to make that a little more clear. 
Okay, and I'll, I'll be talking about that uh, in, in, in the next two garden coaches, okay? All right, and then Ann Russell, uh, what takes out violets? Oh, I, I answered that already. What is a good insecticide for lawn care? Oh, this is Tanya, I answered that one. Okay, and this is Virginia Hinman. I wanna use melorganite, when and how often should he be applied? I think I answered that too, um, okay? Uh, let me see, let's go down here. In the past, I also have had clover, creamy charlie, and dandelions. Can you give me a schedule for my lawn care with melorganite? Okay, Virginia, um, the, it's the same, the, same, the same schedule, the monthly schedule for the lawn care. So, so um, th that would be, that would cover all the things you were just talking about. And that's in the handout at the information desk um, where the, where and under the plant care area, or, or the, it's, called, it's called plant health care, where the microscope is, okay? What can you use to kill Creeping Charlie? Oh, it's Luann, hi Luann. Uh, Creeping Charlie is uh, the chickweed clover on oxalis. It's labeled for Creeping Charlie, the best one in the lawn, okay? And not in the lawn, um, then it is, it is um, you wanna use, the, any of the non-selective, like the iron headed of products. Okay, now what about melorganite? I answered that. I, Mary, I hope you were listening to when I was answering it with the other questions. And then um, this was, um, how do I deal with rough grass that is spreading in my lawn? Um, I have a feeling that what you're talking about uh, when you're talking about rough grass there's a, a, there's a, a coarse type of annual bluegrass. Okay, right now I have a large area of bare areas, but end up having the lime green glass, grass blades. Um, if you use a pre-emergent weed control in, you know, in, in, your, in your lawn right now, it will prevent those annual um, bluegrasses from germinating. So, so, and I don't have a name on here, darn. It just is ZU for Zoom user. Um, if you wanna send me uh, your name in an email, I can give you the details on that, on that, that rough bluegrass, okay? And um, it's Jennifer B at chaletnursery.com. All right, and I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Probably not till next week though. Okay, and then here's Jane. Jane, my maples have has had black spots on their leaves. Oh, okay. I guess you did a chat and a Q and Q and A box. So I answered this. And then can the tar spot leave from tree and go into compost? Oh, that's a good question. I'm trying to see who that was. Oh, it's Usha. Hi, Usha. And um, no, the um, if if your compost is an active compost pile. And you're getting the temperature up, it will kill the spore on you know on the tar spot, and it usually, it, it yeah it usually takes care of it. It usually takes care of it. Okay, all right, everybody. This was a great garden coach. Excellent questions. I had over 55 people. I'm gonna just I'm gonna put this back down. See who all we have here. We have 37 left. That stayed at the very end. I'm so honored. I'm so honored. And um, I thank you all. I, I thank you all. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. And, and so you can see, oh, I'm going to stop share. Stop share. And I'll pop up so you can say hi. And, I, and there we go. Hey, there I am. All the, oh boy, the sun is really shining in. So, uh, but it, it, was, it was just my honor to, you know, to, to be here with you all. And, uh, and I'm gonna enjoy, um, let me see, I have the rest of the afternoon vacation, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. I'm gonna get a bunch of stuff in my own garden done. So hopefully I'll have a bunch of, you know, really fun photos at the next Garden Coach. So bye everybody, thank you so much. All right.